Well, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I know a lot of you are from out of town. I don't know if you, um, those of you who are staying in the hotel, take a look outside your, um, your window and you'll see a river out there. That's the Trinity River. And that river normally is only about 30 feet wide. And with these floods that we've been having, you can see how wide it is. In fact, right outside your window, it's probably about 300 yards wide right now. And I thought that was really appropriate from the standpoint of what's happening to our network. We are getting a flood of demand and data. And I like that video that Scott showed with the dragnet, the data avalanche, because that's really what we here at AT&T and many of you in the industry are facing. And it's, um, it's quite a wave um, that's upon us. And this really sets up the challenge here for you. So our challenge here is how are we gonna meet this wave of demand? Um, if you look back at our wireless data network over the past eight years, our traffic growth has grown over 100,000% in eight years. And you're probably wondering, well, what, what caused that? It actually happened about seven years ago with the introduction of the App Store from Apple. And that was really the kicker that caused this wave of uh, uh, demand on our, our mobile data network. So if you take a look at that wave and you say, well, what's gonna happen over the next five years? Analysts out there are telling us now that they predict we're gonna see another order of magnitude increase, 10X in the next five years. And that, that's uh, a lot to deal with. And we all know where it's coming from. It's coming from uh, streaming, as you just saw. A lot of this is video-based. A lot of this will also be from the Internet of Things. So there's a tremendous challenge here that we have upon us, is how are we gonna meet this demand? Now, right now, we are serving it with a fairly hardware-centric approach. And we believe here at AT&T that hardware really isn't the answer, software is the answer. And I'll explain in a little bit why we feel that that's the right approach. But I wanna kind of highlight something here on this demand curve, because this is something you know, relatively a new phenomena for us. If you look back over the decades of AT&T's history, and you look at that demand curve, and, and if you were a capacity engineer, let's just say even 15, 20 years ago, when we were predominantly a voice service provider, that capacity engineer really only worried about one day out of the year. Does anybody know what that day was? You got it, Mother's Day. The largest single day of traffic volume the entire year. And so pretty much if you could engineer for Mother's Day, and you know, Mother's Day is pretty predictable, you know when it's gonna show up, you pretty much know that mothers on the East Coast are probably gonna get phone calls earlier than ones on the West Coast. And if you make it through that day, you're pretty much good for the rest of the year. Well, if you look at this demand curve now, voice, tra voice traffic is just a trickle. Now, a traffic capacity engineer has to worry about what? The latest, right, the latest Kardashian streaming video, the uh, who's binge watching House of Cards. Um, actually, the biggest event we worry about right now is when Apple releases their next big iOS upgrade. Um, that, because you never know who's gonna hit that button to download now, and oftentimes they download it when they're on their cellular network and they realize, boy, that's a lot. I, I probably wanna stop that and switch over to Wi-Fi. Um, so events like that really bring a lot of volatility and unpredictability to our network. And moving hardware resources around to meet that demand uh, becomes pretty problematic. So we need a better way. And that's why we feel that this hardware approach really isn't uh, keeping pace with this demand and what we need to do. And we feel the software-centric approach is gonna be much more flexible much faster to meet the demand there is. Okay, so that's the challenge. How do we meet this demand? So what's the shift that we're making, the approach we're taking here to satisfy this, this avalanche, this flood of new demand? 
Well, we're really taking a page out of the web industry, the web scale industry. And what we found is, and if you look over the last 10, 15 years at some of these big web scale companies and how they've had to scale for their avalanches and floods, they've taken a very different approach than what we've traditionally done. So our typical approach traditionally has always been a bottoms up approach when it comes to building products and services that are highly resilient and high performing. And that is, we build platforms on based on the bottom of a, a very solid foundation of five nines. It was, as we all know, we very dedicated, customized hardware. And then on top of that, we would build uh, very uh, intricate, redundant, scalable infrastructure architectures, which were very physically based. And then, of course, once you have that solid foundation, your applications and services running on top run really well, and that's great. Well, the web guys did it completely the opposite way. They took a bottoms down, or excuse me, a top-down approach. That is, they didn't, couldn't afford, nor did they have the time to build and procure expensive custom hardware technologies. They did, they did it all in software. They did it up in the upper layers, in the applications. So they built resiliency and performance in software, and they took advantage of a very virtualized layer of very cheap, highly commoditized hardware underneath. And that's how they've been able to scale. So our approach is really to, to do a bit of both. We really want to move over and take more advantage of software and build our, our networks our applications, our services, in a much more software-centric approach, much like these web scale companies are doing. So that's our big shift. So what is our big goal here at AT&T? The first goal here, and it's pretty ambitious, and we came up with this about six months ago, that is we're gonna virtualize and software control 75% of our network in the next five years. Very aggressive, very ambitious goal, but we think we can do it. And the way we're doing it, so you get a sense of what the metric is, what the numerator and denominator is, is we took an inventory of all our network assets, our target network assets that we see in the future that we will need to support. And they basically add up to about 200. And each one of those, we're taking a look at how do we take what may be today a physical network function, and how do we transform it into a virtual network function? And not just virtualize it, but also put it under software-defined control, and also plug it into a new operations management framework. And our goal for 75% in five years, we had to start, you know, you have to start in the beginning building the foundation, and our goal here this year is to achieve 5% towards that 75% goal. And once we get that, that common layer built, that 5%, then you'll see coming into 2016, we'll start ramping up and you'll see the numbers start jumping up significantly. So that's our goal over the next five years. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? The two main drivers are network function virtualization and software-defined networking. No big surprise the big buzzwords right now across the industry. So network function virtualization is really, really key. And as I mentioned, this is about taking physical network functions today and taking them over and putting them into our cloud. We have a special cloud, we call it the AT&T Integrated Cloud. And this is much more than just, you know, porting the software code off a particular switch and porting it over to run on basically Linux, it's much more than that. It's actually taking that functionality, decomposing it in a way where we can get much better efficiencies, much better reusability. That's what network function virtualization is all about. Now, software-defined networking is really how do we get the smarts? How do we now control those now virtualized network functions? And this provides, basically, gives us the uh, the benefits of not just the distributed controls that we have today, but also centralized control for the future. 
And this gives us a great position to do a lot more things to, uh, that will be highly automated and also build a lot of autonomous control going forward. Because as we all know, a lot of the, dri a lot of the big driver behind this software transformation is about cost. Not just out of taking cost out of the actual physical assets that we're procuring, but also taking the cost out of how we operate them. And we see SDN being a really, really critical piece to that. Also, software-defined networking will actually make our networks more reliable and more secure. We will have much greater control and flexibility to move these resources around as we should. If something comes under attack from a security perspective, we'll have greater ability to isolate and quarantine and protect other resources or potentially move those resources away. Now that it's software, it's much, much easier to do that. But also, now that we're putting more of the network into software, we believe that this will accelerate uh, the level of innovation across the industry. That is, now that it's software, it'll make it much easier. It'll lower the barrier for new entrants to come in and create much more effective solutions much faster. So we think that's another great benefit of moving to software as well. So let me um, close here with AT&T's leadership across the industry and, <clears throat> and what we're doing. This year here, we're building more than 60 uh, what we call AT&T integrated cloud nodes. These are basically, this is our new platform that will run our, uh, all these uh, network functions we're talking about, but it's much more than that. Um, I like to use the analogy, this is our like Southwest Airlines 737, okay? We're building out a homogenous, common, ubiquitous cloud architecture that not only can run network workloads, but also can run enterprise workloads. And this is really important because if we're gonna have the best, most reliable, uh, most cost-effective infrastructure, we really need a single common platform. And that's what our AT&T integrated cloud is all about. So it'll be one way to operate. We won't have all these sort of island clouds out there, just like, the, just like Southwest. They'll have one operations manual. They have one plane. They have one, uh, the crews are all trained the same way. And it'll drive a lot of efficiencies and a lot of scale um, into our network as we grow this way beyond. Now, one of the first uh, implementations that are using, uh, that will be utilizing this uh, AT&T integrated cloud is our network on demand service. If you, if you don't know about it, please go to our website and check it out. It's pretty cool. This is basically the first SDN-based service that we now just recently opened up in more than 100 US cities, uh, cities. This basically gives enterprise customers the ability to dynamically control the bandwidth that they need between their sites. And we think this is um, a, a great launching pad for a, a bunch of other additional services that we will be announcing uh, soon that ride on top of this. Pretty exciting. We also have another great service out there, mobile call recording, which is uh, one of our first services that is all virtually based in terms of the call control. This basically gives the ability, such as like banks and brokerage firms that need to have um, the ability to record uh, conversations, trade transactions, uh, so forth, brokerage houses, the ability to uh, if, a, if a broker needs to go out to lunch and one of their clients calls them on their cell phone, uh, typically they would say, hey, I need to call you back when I get back to the office because I have to record this, this trade conversation. Now they can do it with their cell phone. It's all virtualized. It's in the cloud. Great new service that we just launched. And then lastly here, um, I want to talk about AT&T and what we're doing in the industry in terms of how we're leading this software-defined uh, network function virtualization revolution. Um, we've, we've put all our chips in on this. Um, we are banking on this for the future. Uh, this is 
um, a huge, huge part of our plan going forward. Obviously, pretty aggressive goal there to convert 75% of the network in five years. Um, obviously, very dependent on technology, but I'll tell you what's even more important than the technology are the people. And we have a big program across AT&T to get our people on board with this new, new evolution here to software. Right now, we have over 2,000 engineers dedicated and involved in our Domain 2.0 program, which is basically our SDN program. And in addition to that, we have a significant program across the company to uh, a skills pivot program, if you will, to help our employees make the transition to software. And as you know, we traditionally have been an operations company, not a software company. So this is a pretty big pivot for folks to make. So we're there with them to make that change. We have a, a tremendous curriculum out there that they can uh, take advantage of within the company. And of course, a lot of these uh, outside online institutions are helping us with this as well. You've probably heard of Udacity. You've probably heard of a uh, master's program that we have with uh, Georgia Tech on uh, computer science. All of these things we've put out there to help our employees make this, this big pivot uh, to SDN. So with that, I would like to uh, thank you for joining us here this week and welcome to Dallas. Thanks for bringing the good weather and uh, really look forward to meeting some of you after the talk. Thank you very much.